welcome, welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well, and I hope you've recovered. Uh, I've just about recovered, but I've got a busy night, so I'm going to try and get some sleep at some stage tonight, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. City Player Rating Show, Newcastle 3, Manchester City 3, 21st of August 2022, 4.30pm at St. James's. We can't win them all, guys, can we? Match day 3 of the 22-23 season. Yeah, so we'll do the player rating show. This is straight afterwards. Please check out my talking points, which is another 24 hours to 48 hours after this, so I can have time to watch it back. Um, yeah, if my heart can stand it, yeah, it's probably better. I'll be able to take a bit more in. So this player ratings is based on what Mr. Bukowski thinks and what my initial judgment was based on well, it's good job. Good job it wasn't just after the first half, that's for sure. We want to see some interesting ratings, but uh, yeah, we'll go for it, guys. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Please give us a thumbs up, make an old city fan very, very happy, and let me know your scores, guys. Let me know your comments on the players. I think I feel as all been a bit kind with these scores. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how they alter on the talking point show when I've had a chance to watch it back. Right, the City 11, Edison Walker, Stones, Aki, Cancelo, Rodri, De Bruyne, Gundo, Bernardo, Haaland and Foden. I got nine of them. I was happy with that because I put Stones and Bernardo in. But obviously, uh, yeah, a couple of guys uh, sort of moved around that I wasn't expecting. So, But I, I felt quite happy with nine, that's for sure. Subs, Ortega, Marino. Just got to say Ortega, can't we? Diaz, Phillips, Alvarez, Gomez, Mares, and Betty Palmer, and Lewis. And one of those games where Pep didn't want to play his subs, did he? He was forced to make one substitution. Right, on to the ratings. Manchester Evening News, we've got Simon Bukowski, as I think he will be most of the year in charge. Let's start with Edison, an interesting one. I'm going to have to watch him back very, very closely. He made a very good save, said Simon, in the first half, but then went haywire. Had to be bailed out by Cancelo before conceding three. Yeah, I think that was the one where he just rushed out. We know he's going to do this once or twice a season. Not perhaps the ideal time to do it, mind, but there you go, when is. So Simon's given him a five. I mean, I'm going to give him a 5.5. I thought he had that mad moment. I thought he did okay a couple of times, a couple of saves. Could he have done better with the free kick on a first watch? Well, that's that's the area he should be covering. But, you know, goalkeepers can't really win, can they? Because if he puts himself more over that side and the ball goes over the wall into the opposite corner, he looks like an idiot. So, yeah, uh, he probably could have done better. But it was a great free kick. But it was, it was, it was well out. It was well outside. So enough time for the ball to get over the over the wall. Yeah. We'll have a look at that on talking points anyway. So, yeah, I give him a five and a half. Give him, Simon, give him a five. Walker couldn't keep hold of St. Maximin. He certainly couldn't and got a frustrated figure, although he made some headway going forwards. Yeah, so Simon, give him a five. I've, I've equaled that with a five. I might be generous. The wasted cross in the 97th minute where Pep went mad sort of summed up his game, I think, you know, rather than put it into somebody who might be able to get a decent crossing. Yeah, that just about summed up Walker's game. It was not very good, not very good, and that's been nice. Stones looked like a man starting his first game of the season. Awfully rusty against the pace of Newcastle's attack. Yeah, Simon just give him a four. I think that's a bit mean. I'll give him a five. I'll watch it back, but yeah, I'll give him a five. Not a great introduction to the new season for John Stones, who I always bang the drum for, of course. Aki made an important block to stop a speedy Newcastle attack before he was forced off early with what looked like a groin injury. Yeah, Simon's given him a seven. You know, he's suddenly become our best centre half, hasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> and now he's out injured. Uh, Simon's given him a seven. I didn't mark him. He's only on 21 minutes, not long enough to mark, but uh, he certainly didn't help the cause him going off, and he did one or two good things before he did go off. Cancelo made some decisions in his own third that left Guardiola fuming, said Simon, although most of the trouble came down the other flank. It probably did, but I think uh, both flanks were looked a bit dodgy. So Simon's given him a five. Yeah, I'll echo that. I thought defensively was awful. One or two nice touches up front, and it was just one or two, unfortunately. So... Yeah, I'll stick at five for now. I'll be interested to see that back and see what I think. Rodri, one of the worst performances in ages, said Simon, as he was too slow to read the game or respond to it on many occasions. Grabbed the assist for a second goal, though, but, you know, uh, yeah, he's a defender. He's supposed to be, you know, he's, he's a defensive midfielder. He looked out of it today. I mean, Simon's given him a five. I'll give him a 5.5 5 because I thought he was reasonably involved that first half, but he's another guy you have to watch very closely, and I say, with the stress of the game. Perhaps I'll have to watch it back. I thought, 
thought he did slightly better than what Simon says, but he struggled against the lie of the Newcastle. And he always does against physical big teams who are fast as well. He's always going to struggle in these sort of games. Gundo bagged the early goal was one of City's better players as they fought back in the second half. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Uh, Stuart, uh, Stuart, Simon's given a seven. And I've given seven highest joint highest score today. One of the two poor decisions, I think. But overall, definitely one of our better players and uh, got the got a goal, which is what we want. De Bruyne missed a good early chance and struggled to make his mark, says Simon, until that pass from another galaxy of Bernardo. Well, that's what he's achieved. Isn't he? I mean, Simon's given him an eight. I think that's a bit high. I think eight's high. I've given him a seven. He, you know, I'm not going to go higher than seven today. Um, I think he's brought down far too often. He may have created even more and been even better, but he's always able to pull something out of the bag, isn't he? And that's that's why we have him. And and he's getting up from the kicks as well, which is good to see. You know, he's not staying down. So injury-wise, fingers crossed, he looks as though he's bouncing back. But yeah, I think as Simon's eight's a bit high. I'll give him a seven. Bernardo worked hard on the right wing, said Simon, trying to exploit space in behind Burn and anticipated the De Bruyne ball that nobody in a black and white shirt did. Yeah, seven. And I'm going to give him a seven as well. I thought a great return. I mean, uh, he didn't do too much wrong, I don't think, in this. Um, you know, he kept that ball. It might have been one or two uh, mistakes, but that's certainly no worse than anyone else in the team today. Uh, and again, like every, like the rest of the team, didn't have the greatest first half, but more offensive today, I thought, from Pep, certainly in that second half. Um, yeah, and a good goal as well, well taken goal. I like, you know me, I like to see Bernardo playing a bit further up front and getting chances. So I'll give him a seven. Foden always gives defenders problems, said Simon, with his pace and energy. Although we'll be disappointed with the miss in the opening minutes, especially with Ireland waiting again. Yeah, we missed three or four good chances. It was end to end, but we could have easily been two or three up before Newcastle got their, e that, their equaliser. You know, so it wouldn't have been an equaliser, would it, at that stage? But yeah, uh, Harlan waiting again. Yeah, um, not quite as obvious, but still obvious. And he's given him a six, Simon. I've given him a 6.5 before. He doesn't like to play too well. I thought first half, when we were pretty rubbish, I thought he was probably possibly our best player. A bit quiet a second half. So I'll give him a 6.5. But again, it'll be an interesting watch back on that one. Haaland put a proper shift in when City were out of the game. Unfortunately, to see one hit the post and started the comeback. Yeah, Stuart's been... Yeah, Stuart's... Oh, please, guys, I'm, I'm flustered tonight. Sorry. Simon, give him seven. I'm going to give him a seven as well. So that's four guys on in an offensive mode that got a seven. Who probably wouldn't have got that in the first half, any of these players. But, uh, yeah, just an old-fashioned centre-forward display. Just kept putting it in. Uh, perhaps Newcastle, perhaps like that as well. Perhaps Newcastle are more used to that sort of style of play. But he did what he had to do. He was unlucky. Uh, one day at the post, a great save by Pope. If we had to rate Pope, he would be my man of the match, in, in fairness. Although, probably three or four Newcastle players. But, uh, yeah, so we're both good and unlucky. Perhaps a little bit unfortunate. He did make mistakes, but, again... In the same way that Gundo, he made mistakes, but who didn't in that game? And the substitutes, just the one used, uh, Diaz for Rakit on 21 minutes, didn't help City regain any composure, said Simon, at the back, but did prove useful in the Newcastle box. Yeah, I agree with that. Just give him a five, I give him a five as well. Uh, but I do want my defenders to defend initially, and then if they can cause havoc in the opponent's box, fair enough. But first of all, I want someone to defend, and it wasn't very good at that in the first half, so... I'll give him a five. I might even drop that. Who knows when I, when I watch it back. Not used, obviously, everyone else. Yeah, man of the match is difficult. Very difficult. Uh, there's three or four guys with seven there, isn't there? I mean, possibly Gundo, but I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to give it my little hero. After the, after the time he's had, after all the stick and all the all the pr obvious problems and the headhunting by certain other teams, I'm going to give it uh, Bernardo. I'm going to give Bernardo man of the match for this game. Let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what you think the man of the match is. Of course, please join me for that talking points. It may be out on uh, Tuesday, uh, as I say. I give myself twenty-four hours, so I'll probably I'll get a chance to watch it sometime Monday and uh, report on it Monday evening. So it might be out Monday, but might be out Tuesday. But uh, and I will have a, a, a player rating show only this week for the Barcelona game. I'm going to watch it. I might have a talking points as well, depending on what the game is like. But uh, there will definitely be a player rating show on the Thursday after the, this friendly that we're playing in Barcelona. So, who will be one of them and lots of stuff in the lead up to the Crystal Palace game, of course. So, thanks, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your player ratings. And as I say, I, th I think on the face of it there, 
if anything, some of my ratings may decrease. I can't see many going up, but as I said, it's a tale of two halves. If we had to mark City players on that first half, there'd be very few would have got at least a six. I mean, if you're talking three, fours and fives, I think, for that first half display. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.